uh, in 2021 and what to do to grow your social media this year. Uh, if you've been to any of our previous talks or are in the Superstar Blogging Program, well, uh, some of this is going to be a repeat, but some of it won't be. So, um, so to begin, uh, I just want some reminders in terms of thinking about strategy. Today, we're going to talk a lot about tactics, you know, the specific things you need to do. Strategy is, you know, that overarching uh, plan you have. So one, remember Rome is not built in a day, as Eric has said, I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, it takes a long time to grow social media. Unless you suddenly hit the social media lottery and have some just crazy idea people just love, expect slow growth. <clears throat> because there's just a lot of creators out there. There's a lot of content. Um, it just, it takes time, you know? I mean, people can start now and, you know, they might get, find some crazy idea on TikTok and suddenly they have 3 million fans. But <clears throat> chances are that you're going to just gain a little bit every day. So manage your, you know, realistic expectations of this. You know, if you're looking for a huge amount of money and followers, you know, in your first six months, you're, gonna, you're setting yourself up for disappointment. I like to tell people like, you know, don't expect anything in the first year. You have to be able to will, you have to be willing to sort of eat that shit sandwich, as my friend Mark Manson says, like, and just do the hard work because you love it. And so if you're doing this because you like, you don't love it, you're going to hate all those days where you're like, whatever I do seems to fail. I can't get ahead. I want to throw my computer out the window. Um, so, you know, don't, don't expect a lot of, you know, things to happen. If they do, I mean, that's great. More power, to, you know, that's awesome. But don't go in thinking success is going to happen overnight. Um, some universal social media tips. Again, don't obsess about the numbers. If things are going up, that's all that matters. Doesn't matter how fast or slow the direction is, as long as it's generally going up, you know, maybe one day it it goes down a bit. But if you look at it like, you know, month over month and it's just generally going up, you're fine. You know, if, if you have a couple of months where things keep going down, then you need to reassess what you're doing. Um, <clears throat> Be creative and unique. Don't try to be another solo female travel blogger. Uh, there's hundreds of them. Don't try to be another budget travel blogger. You know, don't try to be X, right? There's always like that thing in like startup world. It's like, we're like Uber, but for insert, right? No, you're not Uber for X. Like you have to just be you. Um, you know, whatever, whatever weird thing you love, there are other people who love those weird things on the internet. There's, you know, 5 billion people on the internet. Nothing is too small of a niche. You know, if, you know, this is travel related, you know, because I, I do travel. So I'll use a lot of travel references. You know, if you like fly fishing in Alaska, so do millions of other people. But even if you're like, I just want to blog about my love of Beanie Babies going to find an audience for that. I mean, there's a whole subsection of people who online only talk about ramen noodles, right? Like there are food bloggers are just dedicated to the variety of ramen noodles out there. Olives, nothing is too obscure. But so just find your sort of niche and what you love and just go for it. <clears throat> Save time for uh, using social media scheduling stuff like later, spread social, tailwind. And find the best app for you. Don't be, don't feel like you need to be everywhere. I hate video. I don't do video. I have one TikTok. It's got like 150 views. Um, I made it two years ago when TikTok came out just so I can have my name. I don't do YouTube. I don't like video. Uh, so I'm not on video. Um, and so I don't feel like I miss it. I know 
Instagrammers who got you know millions of followers, and if you go to their Twitter, they get like five thousand. They just don't use Twitter. Um, so don't feel the need to be on networks you don't love. We'll talk about you know how many networks you should be on if if more than if any at all, but don't feel the need to be on platforms that you don't love because when you it's going to come out in your content that you're just sort of phoning it in and you're you you only feel the need to be there because everybody is like well you gotta get it on TikTok, right <clears throat> um all right uh how to get followers uh some general tips before we get into um platform specific tips. You wanna create shareable content. Oh, there's a typo. It should be resource heavy threads, not resource heave threads. Um, um, people like memes, infographics, um, things that are shareable, like, you know, 20, you know, things I learned blogging um, on Twitter, like that kind of thread that's gonna get shared. People like questions, you know, if, if you are on Twitter, you'll notice people are like, what's your favorite book? You know, describe travel without describing travel. People share, answer and share those all the time. People like inspiring, uplifting quotes. I mean, Ryan uh, Holiday's entire Twitter is just quotes and it's got hundreds of thousands of people create shareable words of wisdom. And you can see that in Mark Manson and James Clear, they do that a lot. Um, so people like content and, you know, stories, right? Instagram, especially a good photo and a good story, but what really is a great way to grow is creating content people want to bookmark or save or um, share. People love words of wisdom and affirmation or, or stupid memes. People love memes. So, <clears throat> um, real, like besides that, the other real key to success is collaboration. You know, it's not, if you know the reference to the movie, um, if you don't know the movie, then I'm way too old and you're not. Um, is field of dreams, you know, if you build it, they will come. The internet is <clears throat> not like that. If you build it, they will not come. Um, there's just, you know, hold on, allergy season, be right, BRB. Um, I don't know how to mute myself. All right, I'm going to take this as an opportunity to let on. everyone who hasn't dropped their blog or their Instagram in, just make sure you put HTTP colon slash slash so that it comes as a hyperlink. Okay, go ahead, Matt. Sorry, it's cedar season. Uh, well, it's not cedar season, but they're having like an off season and I'm um, super allergic to cedar. Uh, if you have allergies, Texas is not a great state. Uh, but you know, there's so much content these days, right? If you walk down the street, you can be like, oh, look, a new restaurant, maybe we'll try it out. But like, <clears throat> there's no proverbial street on the internet where you can just find some of these new website or Instagram, right? So you really have to be active and putting yourself out there and, and just pounding the proverbial pavement. And so you really just want to constantly pitch people to do collaborations, whether that's a guest post on someone's website, a video, uh, Instagram live, um, you know, going to people who, in related topics, you have to collaborate with people. Um, you know, this is not like in 20, 2008, where there were like 10 travel bloggers, you know, like <clears throat> I literally, hit the end of the internet. Nowadays, there's like thousands on Instagram I come across. I'm like, I have never even heard of these people in my entire life. You know, and they, they don't even follow anybody I would know. And yet they still have like hundreds of thousands of, of followers, right? So there's a lot of small little 
spheres of influence on, online. So you really just have to keep connecting with people if you want to grow. And so my three-step process is create a wish list of, of people, reach out to them, and then repeat forever. You're going to get a lot of no's, um, but it doesn't matter. Just constantly keep reaching out to people. If, if you guys notice, I am constantly doing Instagram lives with people. That's how I grow my Instagram. It gives you exposure to new audiences. No matter how big you are, you always need to be exposed to new audiences, right? James Clear just wrote about this actually on his Twitter. He's like, I have 1 million uh, email subscribers, which is a fuck ton of email subscribers, right? But he was also saying, you know, there's 350 million Americans out there. Uh, you know, <laughs> so there's a lot of room for growth, right? So no matter how big you are, you're like, well, there's always room for growth. So don't, you know, you always want to keep growing. You know, you always want to keep collaborating with people and venture into other niches, right? Um, just because I talk about travel doesn't mean that's the only thing I talk about. Uh, yesterday, I did an Instagram Live with Ryan Nicodemus from The Minimalist, um, talking about minimalism and that as a lifestyle that has overlap with travel. Uh, I talk to finance people a lot. There's overlap to travel on that. You know, people who like to save money tend to also like to save money on travel. So they want to hear my message. You know, if you are talking about you know, tra family travel, you can go to a parenting website, you know, because parents will eventually one day travel with their kids and they're going to want to know how to do that. And so you be the expert for them. So don't feel like you need to just like, if you only talk about ramen, only talk to other people about ramen, go to a, a travel blog about Japan, a travel blog in general, a food blog in general. Like there are, there's always a Venn diagram of overlap between you and other niches. You are never just alone. All right, let's talk about um, specific strategies for specific platforms. We'll start with Facebook because they're the biggest. Generally, Facebook sucks. It is definitely not as good as it used to be. Um, Facebook has de-emphasized pages in favor of groups, and but who knows how long that will be. Um, generally, you know, people's news feeds are just so cluttered now with ads. You know, now it's not you don't get to see the newest first. It's always the top, and you have to like. Re, all, every time you log in, you have to like keep resetting your feed to find the, the latest updates first. Um, so generally, it's it's not that great. I mean, obviously, you want to have a Facebook page because you should be everywhere. Um, um, but don't use Facebook as a big engine of growth. Um, it's great for content. You know, we post articles there, but most interactions happen on other platforms these days. But it is good for groups because there is a group for everything out there. And so if you're looking for other people within your topic or looking to meet people in your industry as a whole, um, you know, there are lots and lots of groups out there where you can just meet your peers. And so for that, Facebook is good because well, your peers aren't going to, you know, do like read lots of your content, but they will collaborate with you, right? So like, yeah, you know, they're not your end user in a sense. So like, for me, they're not a consumer, you know, probably not going to join one of these events, but they are people who you, you know, you work with and thus, you know, can do collaborations with. So Facebook gets good that way. Um, and then if you are going to, want to grow your Facebook page, you know, do videos. Facebook really emphasizes video. So if you're doing, you know, uh, Facebook lives, they'll, they'll emphasize that in the feed. Um, promote your page heavily on other pages. So, you know, in other, you know, whether it's on your website or Twitter or uh, Instagram, you know, you always want to sort of cross promote your platforms a bit. 
And then people love questions in, in memes, right? So you can see, you know, here, you know, here's a meme. <clears throat> but <clears throat> that's got a lot of likes, a lot of comments, engagements, and reach. Generally, Facebook reach is pretty bad. You know, we will, we got 270,000 likes. Um, and on a general just piece of content, we might get 15,000, you know, if it's like really engaged, just on like an, a post. So, I mean, that's like less than 10%. So this is good. We got this is like 20% of our audience. Um, uh, <clears throat> same with this question over here. Um, that did a lot. So things that you can do to get engagement signals to Facebook, you know, hey, this is a really engaged page. Let's show it more often. And so while, you know, it's just a meme and it's just a question, and I obviously I can't read through 458 comments, um, but these are all signals to Facebook to start showing your content more so that when I post an article, you know, like 20, 10, you know, 20 ways to save money on travel, Facebook has already determined that my page is worth, you know, showing higher in the algorithm. So more people are gonna see that. There's sort of a knock on effect to, to, to making these sort of like virally posts. Um, and as you can see, you know, we got 131 shares there. People are sharing that with your friends. That's a great way to get more likes to your page. Um, so, you know, a question is a great way to engage with your existing audience. Memes, images, are a great way to get people to share your page and get a new audience. Same with video. The goal is to just create a lot of interaction on your page so that Facebook emphasizes it more within its algorithm. But again, Facebook isn't, you know, <clears throat> as good as it used to be, you know, and that is even before COVID. Um, so, Great place, you definitely want to have it. You definitely want to use it. You definitely want to do video, but it's more of a place to have as a platform just to have, but then a place where like, you're going to get a lot of cool growth and engagement. Facebook is our page that grows the slowest. I think Facebook is like, you got a hundred new followers last week. And I was like, oh, well, you know, I got a hundred new followers on Instagram the day before. So it, it's really like a lot of growth doesn't happen there, especially young people don't use Facebook as much as um, sort of the 35 and anyone 35 and older uses Facebook way more than people who are 35 and younger. But again, it's a good group. Uh, Instagram lives is the way where it's at. Um, so you'll see on my Facebook page, I do a lot of Instagram lives. Um, Oh God, there's a typo there too. Um, uh, sorry, I'm distracted by this. I wonder if I can change the title. <laughs> I, I misspelled the, uh, diaries, but you'll notice that on my Instagram, if you go to my IGTV and I, you know, you'll see, I have lots of collaborations with others. And so a good way to grow your Instagram is to collaborate with other creators because Instagram will alert their followers that they are doing a live. And so, and you get this person to promote it and they click over. So it's one of the best ways that I found to grow your Instagram. And yet, you know, if you have a thousand people on Instagram, it's good to like start with, you know, within that like zero to 2000 range and then work your way up as you grow. Um, but even, you know, you know, Jeff, he's got 25,000 people. Um, I have 123, um, but I still want to talk to him. One, because Jeff is a great guy. Uh, he lives in Austin, he's a friend of mine. Um, but also like his audience is very different from my audience. And my audience is very different from his audience. So you have two audiences sort of coming together in and switching. And so this is a good way to, um, where is the one? 
Edit. Here we go. Um, good way to get new readers, um, new followers, right? So I do like two of these a week and I see the biggest spikes in follower counts when I do these. Do these. So I cannot emphasize this enough, do collaborations this way. Second, focus on Instagram reels. I don't, I, again, I told you I don't like video, but Instagram is really trying to take on TikTok. So if you really want to uh, get featured in the discovery part of Instagram, do Instagram reels. Um, they, they're just really encouraging people to do it. Do not republish your reel or your TikTok because Instagram, I, I learned this um, recently, does actually have people going through reels to put in the discovery thing. Uh, it's not just a computer algorithm. And when people see in the reel, the TikTok logo, they take it out because they don't want to be promoting TikTok on Instagram because they're trying to take over Instagram. Um, you know, they're trying to take over uh, TikTok. So promote reels, make, but make original reels. And that would be a great way to grow because Google will, it's not Google. Instagram not only emphasizes that within the feed, it also emphasizes that in the discovery. Uh, and next, memes and quotes. You can see here's my feed here. Uh, trying to make it, um, you know, like a pattern. <clears throat> uh, but memes and, and, and like quotes, way more engagement than just my pictures. Uh, but that's another way I, I sort of grow. Let me give you an example because I don't, I don't have it here. Um, Find a find the video. So on my last meme, that one. So this, the forty thousand feet one, I put on Instagram. It got a fifty thousand people, uh, four hundred and fifty six shares, one hundred and eighty one uh, saves, and four thousand likes. Okay, compare that with even a photo that did really, really well. Uh, got 35,000 reach, 20,000, 2,000 um, likes. So like a really good quote in me <clears throat> can go really far. I share a lot of my Twitter insights um, on Instagram too. Again, what you want to do is create shareable content. I mean, these memes are ridiculous, right? But they get shared, they get engagement, and it gets new followers. So creating shareable content on Instagram, as well as Reels and Lives, are the three best ways to really get new followers. Uh, <clears throat> and some other tips, you know, photos are great. Photos where stories are better. Um, have a story that goes with your photo. People, people will engage more with that picture if there's like a cool story behind it. Not just like, here's like, here's me being weird with, with the cruise hat. But like this Morocco one is about, you know, learning to process destinations, um, you know, <clears throat> after the fact. And, you know, it has, let's look at today. You know, it has 133 comments, right? I don't, you know, people really engage with that because they could resonate with that story of, yeah, I've been to a destination that took me a little while to figure out if I, if I liked it or not. So try to have stories, you know, um, with your photos. None of those like little stupid quotes influencers always put, have a story. More engagement means you'll be seen in the app more. Twitter. Twitter's really weird these days. I mean, basically, if, if, um, if you're not talking about politics, you're not really getting far. Uh, especially travel, people are really looking for travel. But some things I've noticed that really work well on Twitter, 
are posting life insights like these two. Um, this the second one I, I I forgot to have the shares, but there was it was like a few hundred and like a thousand likes. Um, you can see this one from January, um, hundred reshares, five hundred and sixty likes. Um, post links only if they're useful. Uh, lead gen, you know, doesn't really work well. Um, I don't know why it says link gen. Man, um, hold on, I'm annoyed by this. Lead gen, better. Um, lead gen doesn't really work well. Like, so like sign up for this, sign up for that. Nah. I find that the best articles are ones that take a stand or are super helpful. You know, like um, why I hate Tulum or, you know, 20 ways to save money on travel. Things that are useful, people will engage with more. People love photos, post a photo, get saved a ton. Again, you're, what you're really looking for is engagement because even if you set your timeline to newest first, Twitter also is, is just not sending your content to everybody. So it is also looking at algorithms, you know, what is the most engaged content. Uh, and cross promote on other platforms. We are always telling people to come to Twitter. Um, but you know, the, the life insights, you know, the, the new stuff, the photos, that's what really gets people on Twitter more so than, you know, just like subscribe to my newsletter. Um, and one thing I would also say is be consistent on Twitter in terms of what you're posting about. Um, very rarely now are people, unless you're like an actual, YouTube or you describe yourself as an influencer. People don't care about all the various assets, aspects of your life. I just, you know, focus on whatever it is you want to talk about and, and just kind of stick to that. Like you don't have to only talk about travel or only talk about ramen, but you know, I generally just try to like focus on a couple of things on Twitter. So, you know, people kind of get a general sense. Like if you go to Matt's Twitter, you're going to find these life insights, news, and like politics and movies. Whereas if you go to Matt's Facebook page, you get stories. So you kind of want to like have your, your platforms, you know, have a focus, right? Don't just like share the same content on all the platforms. Otherwise, there's no reason for people to follow you on all the various platforms. And another thing I would say about Twitter is, you don't feel like you have to post every hour, you know, less is more. Less is definitely more uh, on, you know, post on Twitter when you have something good to say or something, you know, because if you're just posting all the time, people will kind of get, an, will get annoyed that you're always in cluttering their feed and they'll, they'll, they'll unsubscribe. So let's talk about some other platforms. TikTok is an untapped resource for travel. I don't use it a lot. I hate video, but there are not a lot of travel TikTokers out there. Um, and so I definitely would start laying the groundwork for when travel does happen, being an, a travel TikToker. Lots of food out there, lots of dance videos, lots of politics, not a lot of travel. Clubhouse is a new app. Um, if you haven't heard about it, it's a new hot app where people, it's like an audio only session where people can just talk. I don't really love it, uh, but it is not a place to get followers, um, in, but it's a good place to position yourself as a thought leader in your industry um, and get known as that because that could get, that gets you sort of collaborations with other people. Uh, Snapchat, forget Snapchat. It's a horrible use of your time. Pinterest is okay for raw traffic because people are planning their trip, but I wouldn't spend a lot of time on Pinterest. Um, 
people use it to plan. People aren't really planning now. It's a search engine. So I would optimize Pinterest at the same way you would optimize Google, but it's not a social media platform. Social media platforms I would really focus on, Instagram, TikTok, if you love video, Twitter, and Twitter. Those are like the three great ones. Clubhouse, if you want to be a thought leader, um, and Facebook, just to, you know, because you have to have Facebook. I'm not mentioning YouTube here because YouTube is a platform the same way like blogging, WordPress is a platform. It's not a social media channel. It is a publishing platform. So let's get that one. <clears throat> so when you're thinking of social media, you want to do a lot of collaborations. You know, interact with people, uh, do collaborations a ton. Cross promote all your channels, right? Because you never want to put all your eggs in one basket. You know, so you want your audience to be a little bit portable. You want people to be able to come to uh, a webinar that you do lunchtime on a Wednesday. Um, you want people to go over to your your Facebook page or your Twitter, or you want them to sign up for your newsletter. You know, you don't want to be just tied to one algorithm, right? You know, if Instagram changes how, what they do and you only have Instagram, suddenly your, your reach is a lot less than it would have been if you had been trying to get Instagram followers everywhere else. I always try to get people on one platform to join other platforms. Just constantly reminding people I have this other stuff, just so I am not tied to the whims of one social media company. Don't be afraid to self-promote all the time. After all, there's so much content out there. You are going to um, get lost in the crowd if you don't just constantly update. Um, and you, you don't have to update all the time, but don't be inconsistent because you know if you if you were going to post every day at noon, just follow that. Do that. You know, don't take three month breaks. One, your audience will forget about you, but two, the algorithms will see the drop in engagement and they'll sort of downgrade your like visibility within their programs. And it takes, a, it takes a long time to come back from that. It's very hard, you know, if once, once you've gone dead on a platform to just be like, hi, I'm back and expect, you know, the same level of engagement. It takes, it's, it's not, it's tough. So I'm gonna wrap this up and take questions. I spoke way too long, uh, but we do have a, a, a blogging course called Superstar Blogging. It's not a course, I hate that word. It's a class uh, where I'll teach you everything you need to know about not only social media, but building a brand, um, writing better, optimizing your content for SEO, getting press coverage, uh, connecting with journalism, journalists, uh, and how to make money online. And if you um, use the code half off, you can save 50% uh, off your first month. It's a subscription program because every month you'll get ongoing tech support, weekly strategy calls. We do them on Wednesday too. I did one this morning, I'm gonna do one this afternoon and feedback on writing. Uh, every month I'll, I'll copy edit one of your uh, articles. So it's more than just information. It is a class, it is strategy, it is ongoing support. And again, you can find that at superstarblogging.com, 50% off your first month with the code half off. And with that, I will take questions. Amazing, thank you so much. Can you just tell me, is it half off spelled? I missed it. Half off spelled. Okay, I'm putting it here for people to see. And I just linked the superstar blogging link so you guys could look at it. But we have a ton of questions. Before we get to them, I just want to say you guys are awesome. So many
many people put their links, their websites, their Instagrams, their Facebook, so many things. And people are DMing me on the Zoom chat um, saying how they're like following so many new people and people are following them. So I'm going to assume that you were fully paying attention to everything Matt was saying and also finding lots of new people on Instagram and their blogs and Twitter and stuff like that. So kudos to you guys. This is literally like when Matt was talking about collaboration, like you guys can collaborate with each other. Like you guys are all really awesome people. So definitely don't overlook this group. This I mean, there's 79 network. people on this call. That's 79 mm -hmm. collaborations, guest posts, and links right there. Mm -hmm. And so definitely like, be sure to connect with each other. You can do that through our website. You can obviously do that through all the links that were just dropped. And before I forget, um, if you go to the chat right above where you actually type, there's three dots, you can save down the chat. So if you want to listen fully and you don't want to be distracted, you can save it down and find everyone after. Um, okay, so I have a few great questions. Um, first is from Carolina, who's asking, what are some discussion topics for collabs between travel bloggers that you've used and seen, you know, to be proven useful. <laughs> I always try to find someone who's different than me. So tomorrow I'm, I'm doing one with Follow Me Away, um, uh, Victoria and Terrence. Um, they turn these like photographs into like fantasy art kind of things. Um, so we're talking about how they come up with ideas and photography tips and how like you know, they, they do that. Follow me away. They're really, they're really cool. Um, follow me away. So let me see if you can see it on the screen. So like, <laughs> there's like all these arty kind of things that they do. It's like fantasy paintings. So talking about that. Um, I talked to, you know, Ryan yesterday about minimalism. I'm talking to Alex Backus next week about diving. So I try to find people who, who discuss topics I don't discuss, and then we talk about their topic. And so do you never talk to budget travel bloggers? I do once in a while. Um, we usually just talk about budget travel and the future of travel, but I try to find other other people as much as possible okay great and then nicholas is asking how do you approach another content creator who you don't know personally to do an ig live together um i would slip into their dms and say hi i'm matt i run this channel uh i normally talk about this every week i do an instagram live i i'd love to feature you we normally get X amount of people per live. Uh, I have so many followers. Um, would you be interested? It will only last 30 minutes or so. Try to give them a time uh, stamp. Um, I would do that. Hopefully, maybe if you have mutual friends, travelers tend to travel, um, follow each other. You can get an introduction that way, but if you can't do that introduction, that's how I would do it. I would just make it really simple. I do a live, I have this many followers. I wanna talk about this topic. We'll promote your product. I normally get a hundred people on at any given time. So like, you know, if you do it a 45 minute live and the number never goes below 100, that means you know, you'll probably reach 1,500 people. So I would say that like normally we have 1,500 total viewers. Um, and then uh, that's kind of what I would say. Cool. And then Moshi is asking, do you think that IG is a good platform to bring people onto your site or is it just to maintain your social media presence? Is, I think it's more for social media. If you're, if you're trying to direct people from another platform directly to your site, Facebook and Twitter work better for that. But to build a, a social following, TikTok and Instagram are probably the two best for that. Great. Yeah. And then that's a great segue into Pooja's question, which 
is on a scale from one to 10, how important is it to have a Twitter account? Five. And that's because you can get people onto your actual site, right? Through the links? Yeah, I mean, Twitter, you know, has turned into a news po political platform in the last couple of years. Um, it's not as like, it definitely, is, I love Twitter the most, but I mean, we don't see a lot of growth from it. You know, nobody stops me on the tweet and the street and says, I love your tweets, right? People are like, I see your Instagram, you know, so like, or I see your TikToks. Um, you know, that's what they would say to someone with TikTok. Uh, <laughs> but Twitter is just a way to, because it's so real time, um, engage in like a conversation with people. If you like it again, like, you know, you, Renee Roman uh, got like over half a million on Instagram, but a few thousand on Twitter. She doesn't really use Twitter. You know, like you don't need it. Yeah, but also you use Twitter to get uh, guest posts and to reply to journalists, right? So it's not necessarily just for your audience. It's also for networking within the industry. Right, you know, so like it's a great way to, again, network with your peers and, you know, because it's so used for news and politics, um, a lot of journalists are like, hey, you know, do you know any experts on this or, or that? And so that's a great way to sort of spot opportunities for features and media publications. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, Moshi's asking for small Facebook pages. Are there good ways to get more of an audience and that are actually not paid ways to do it? Again, you know, um, I would just say memes and shareable content. Okay. Um, quotes, and even the ups engagement. You can't, you know, video, um, having all your friends sign up, you know, because Facebook will then say, you know, like three of your friends will tell their friends, like your friend has liked this page. Would you like to like that page? So that, you know, that can be something um, you can do. Great. Um, and I think that sort of covers this question, but how do you attract Facebook users that are quite interested? Like they enjoy budget traveling, but they don't really join groups because they don't feel the need. So does that sort of cover it too? Yeah, I mean, again, Facebook is not a great platform. So don't think of Facebook as like, I have to grow my Facebook page. People just aren't there anymore, especially in like you know, recent years, like, people, it's just not a great space, right? So people use Facebook less and less. Um, so like your Facebook page could, will bring you audience, like traffic. And a lot of people only use Facebook, but if you're trying to reach like a new audience, Instagram or TikTok, especially a younger audience is better. But um, if you're trying to, reach maybe an older audience. Yeah, Facebook works well, but still like you grow very slowly because there's there's just so much clutter on Facebook now. Would you say that it's useful to use Facebook ads though if you were, let's say, somebody that has a tour group or a tour company and you're not your niche isn't necessarily like super young people. It's like more just people going on tours. Would that be a good way to use paid advertising Facebook or no? Yeah, I mean, Facebook is still great for ads. Like if you're going to run like lead ads, which is getting people to sign up for like a newsletter or something, Facebook is great for that. If you have a tour, you want to advertise on Facebook and that's great for that. But if you're, if you're looking for you know, just ways to organically grow your Facebook page, you know, from a thousand to 5,000, it's going to take a long time. And all of the things we talked about can really help, but you know, it's a source of traffic. I don't really, I asked my Facebook followers, if I got rid of the page, um, you know, do they find me elsewhere? And a lot of people said, no, I, this is how I, I find you. Um, you know, this is how I click on your articles. They use it as like an RSS feed. And so you can tell your audience to make sure that, you know, that they have your page marked as like see first. 
So Facebook does show it um, often. Um, it doesn't get buried, but again, it's not like we don't put a lot of time into it because you know, in the last five years, I it just the, my follower count has gone up, but my traffic count has dropped. Right. Um, Moshi's asking, are there travel related hashtags to follow that you find particularly useful? On what platform? Let's say Instagram. Instagram. Um, I don't follow ha any hashtags specifically, so I, I don't really know. I don't think, I look for people by seeing who follows what, right? So like hashtags are, you know, you, you look at like, let's say travel. I mean, there's like a billion of tags there, right? Conferences, if I was going to a conference, I definitely look at that conference hashtag. But generally, if I'm looking for new people, find people you love and then see who they follow. That's a, that's a better shortcut. Great. Karen asked a really good question. How important is it to have people following your actual blog since most people follow content on social media channels? Every day you want to get people off social media to your blog. Why? Because, Erica, I'm, I'm, <laughs> let me just finish. Because algorithms change. You, and you don't own your audience. If Instagram went out of business tomorrow, you lose everybody there. But by getting people off these platforms to sign up for your email list, you now own your audience. So you should always be trying to get people off these social media platforms to your website to sign up for your newsletter because the algorithms will change, platforms will change. You know, everyone was into Snapchat and now everyone's into TikTok. And, you know, um, you know, people, there's these platforms are changed. So you don't want to just always be tied into one. Um, so always try to get people off one platform into your website to sign up for your email list. So there's no real point unless you actually have a newsletter that you're signing people up onto is what you're saying, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, for example, like you can get people to go over to your website to read information. Um, oh, I have a new blog, come over and check it out. That's great. But you have to do that all the time. Uh, and then, you know, they're not going to see an update, but everyone will always see an email so you really do you have to have an email list like you learn if you're a creator you have to have an email list if you don't have an email list start one today and if you refuse to get one you're just being obtuse and you're gonna in the long term lose out mm -hmm. you must have an email list yeah great anukrati is asking is clubhouse a global app it is yes but you have to have an iphone right yes it's a global app that is iPhone only at the moment. And uh, so you have to be invited, but you know, everybody gets like a unlimited invitation. So if you know somebody on it, they can invite you on, onto it. Great. Um, Lexi's asking, I know slow and steady growth is okay, but how do you know when, it, when it's time to call it a day and try something else? A year, longer than a year? Six months. Okay. I would say if you start implementing, you know, like we're going to do this in six months from now, you haven't, you know, it's not, it's not working and you, by not working, you like, you're seeing more flat growth or low growth days than increased days, then you definitely need to change that, change what you're doing. We've had a few questions trickle in about newsletters since we just emphasized it so much. That's something that gets covered thoroughly in the superstar blogging course, right? 100%. We have many, many lessons on newsletters. That's a whole topic in itself. Mm -hmm. The one thing you want to take away is you need to start a list and you need to start a list today. Yes. And then Matt will cover everything else in superstar blogging. Um, 
Let's see. We only have a few others. Anukrati is asking, are the scheduling apps free or do they charge a fee for social media? Um, some are free, some are paid. I don't think Sprout Social has a free version, but I know later Tailwind, does. what? Later does. But yeah, and later both have free versions. Yeah. Um, Deborah's asking, you mentioned people aren't planning right now. Is that true for everything or just travel related stuff? Say again. So Deborah said that you, I just deleted it, but basically you said that people aren't planning right now. Is that just travel related planning or is it everything? Like people aren't planning life. Oh, I, I just mean travel <laughs> are, are planning life. Um, but yeah, just like, you know, Nobody's really like people are dreaming about travel, but nobody's like really doing anything right right now in terms of booking wise because they're really worried about like what happens. You know, six mm -hmm. months from now. Great. And then Zoe's asking, she said that she aside from Instagram, she just started an e-commerce store. And she was wondering if that's a good spot to put her blog also, or should she create a separate blog aside from her e-commerce store? Um, so you have a blog and an e-commerce store on different websites? So she currently has an e-commerce store and wants to start a blog. Should it be on the same website? Yes, yeah, yeah. You should definitely have everything together because, you know, you want your blog to feed into your e-commerce store and, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. so, always house every, as much as you can on one domain name. So people like, the, the more websites you send people to go, the, the less likely they are to like do anything because it's just, you're creating friction. And every time you create friction, you lose people. Even if it's the simplest thing, like enter an email, you will lose people. Now, I mean, obviously you want people to enter an email, but you know, there, <clears throat> anything that creates friction sees loss. So reducing that friction online will, will lead to a like just higher conversion. And then Moshi's asking, do you find it useful to create a lead ad campaign on Facebook that will grow your email subscribers specifically? And will do you think they'd become longtime users if that's how you got them? Yeah, definitely. I mean, Facebook is is great for leads. And that's exclusively how we do our advertising on Facebook is lead ads because they sign up for the funnel and they stay. It's a great way to reach people. Mm -hmm. And Caroline's wondering, is it more beneficial to self-promote your own page or to engage in comments in groups and stuff like that or on other people's pages to get yourself known? Uh, I would do groups over comments. Comments on social media, less so on a blog. Okay, wonderful. And then Sarah's asking, is it okay to put the same photos in your newsletter that you do on social media? Yes. Great. The last question I want to end with is Tristina's, which is, why do you try to collaborate with others that are not on the same topic as you? It seems like it would be beneficial to you know, your audience and their audience, if it was the same followers in the same niche. But they are, they're all travel, right? So um, I'm not gonna have someone who does luxury travel um, because I mean, I, I we don't do luxury, but family travel, that's similar. I mean, I have audience members with families. Uh, I have audience members who scuba dive the audience members who take pictures. Um, so you're, again, you're, you're looking at that Venn diagram, there is an overlap. Um, you know, so it's not that I'm, I wouldn't do a an Instagram live with, you know, like a tech blogger or, you know, somebody who, um, I don't know, blogs about, or Instagrams about cars, you know, but travel, like, you know, budget travel falls under a lot of categories. So don't, 
don't think like I can only talk to a bunch of travelers. You, you know, you can talk to a couple, but you, you know, too, but you can also bring in other people if there's an overlap. Photography is just a general thing people like. So there's a lot of overlap. Mm-hmm. 100%. Okay. So I'm just dropping the superstar blogging link again. And with the code that gets you half off, that was our last question. Um, if I missed your question, I'm so sorry. You can definitely send me a DM in Instagram or send Matt one, or you could send an email to matt at nomadicmatt.com um, to get your question answered. We're always happy to be answering questions because we really, really want people to succeed in this industry, honestly. If you guys are succeeding, then we're succeeding because we just want to raise the industry up together. So the better we all get on all of these platforms, the more uh, serious that people take bloggers and Instagrammers and all that sort of stuff and the greater our industry becomes. So we are here to make sure that you guys are succeeding. So if you have questions, please let us know. And um, before we let Matt do his last comments. I'm just going to do another screen share so I can finish off some TNN business. Um, so for those of you, I actually followed everyone that was in the chat and I noticed that so many of you we weren't following yet. So I don't know if that just means that everyone is new here today, but if you are, I just wanted to let you know where you could find more of these events. Um, the nomadicnetwork.com slash events. We have three different types of events that we offer now. One is a presentation style like that, um, like this one. We also have happy hours that are more like regionally based where you can actually talk to travelers, like you won't be muted the whole time. Um, and then we have book clubs. So those are the three kinds of events that we are hosting now. Um, for this week, we have Iris and Patrick, who are a retired couple on the road. They're going to be talking on Thursday, or is that tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow at noon. And they're going to be telling us how they did it. And we're very excited about that. Next Tuesday, we have Brooke, who's going to be sharing about how she travels, even though she has MS. And you know that's something that people don't typically travel with. Uh, she's going to share her inspiring story. And then next week, Wednesday, um, we're having Matt back and he's going to talk about all about how to save for a trip. And you know that's Matt's bread and butter. So you guys have to come back because Matt is really good at saving money. Um, and we also have Susan next Thursday, who's going to be talking to us about um, how to plan culinary focus trip that supports local communities. Susan's actually here today. So Susan, if you could drop your link to the event, please do. Um, these are just some of the events that we have coming up, but we actually have a ton planned. Um, and then this is our next book club. Who's read anything by Don George? If you have like, raise your hand. I can't really see you, but hopefully someone has. Um, Don George is a doll. He is amazing. And he's one of the best travel writers alive today. Um, we are so excited. This book club, he's actually going to come and answer questions about his own book, which is very special and different than other book clubs that you would have at your typical like library. Um, and so that's Wednesday the 3rd at 12 p.m. Matt will be hosting Dawn. And uh, I know it's in like two and a half, three weeks, but you could still grab your copy on Bookshop or Amazon and read it before this event. We would love to have you. And then the last thing I wanted to say is you are definitely more than welcome and more than invited to become a Patreon member. We love, like I said at the beginning, having new people join us. Um, it's just, we really get to connect with you on a whole nother level and we get very involved in your life and <laughs> what you're doing day to day. And so it's a really fun way to deepen your connection. Uh, we, like I said, we have a Facebook group where we get to chat all day. And then we also uh, give you access to all the TNN replays. So if you were only half listening today and you were just finding people on Instagram, like this will be up in a few days. So don't worry about it. Uh, we also have lots of live Q and A's. And since it's a smaller group, Patreon than the Nomadic Network, you get way more personalized attention. I saw some people are asking tons of questions. 
join our Patreon. Matt will answer them all. <laughs> um, and then you also get books and all this stuff. So patreon.com slash nomadic Matt to check it out. And we would love to have you as a member. And last but not least, I just want to say thank you so much for being a part of our community. We would not be able to have such fun events without you. Honestly, I can't come up with all these questions. So if it were just me and Matt talking this this conversation would have been done after 20 minutes. So thank you for bringing your incredible questions and your insight and for sharing in the chat and for just showing up today. You guys are awesome. And Matt, did you have anything else you wanted to say? Nope, that's all. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, have a great afternoon or morning or evening. I don't know where you are in the world, um, but you know, Erica really hit the nail on all the heads. Um, and so we'll see you at our next chat. And hopefully I'll see you in class at, at Superstore Blogging. And um, yeah, if you need anything, you know our email and we'll see you next week or tomorrow or wherever. <laughs>